The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hello, I'm Carl Seidel, host of The People's View. The People's View is a show sponsored by the Nashua Republican City Committee. Uh, the committee meets uh, every second Thursday at the Crown Plaza. And if you want to contact us, we have a website, nashuagop.org. And at the end of the uh, show, you'll see some contact phone numbers or email addresses that you may want to uh, send us your comments and uh, uh, recommendations. Thank you for listening in. Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello, today we have two guests. We have uh, Jane Cormier, who's running as Senate in Manchester, and Doris Hohenze, who is uh, running in Nashua as, for Senate, the state Senate. So both of you uh, have campaigns to run, and I understand your topic uh, mostly is Common Core and education of children. Well, that's what I think what got us into the race. It's, that's what got you running? that passion to, to make sure that we have we can protect our local schools, mm -hmm. and our parents' mm -hmm. voice, and our teachers, our, our local teachers. They should be in charge of our students, and we should work collaboratively with them without a lot of these mandates that are undermining the task at hand. And uh, Doris, uh, you've uh, been in this, uh, this topic. Uh, Jane, yeah. Doris. It's okay. Excuse me. Doris, Jane, and uh, Common Core has been one of the things that uh, in the past couple of years that was sort of one of two or three little projects to try to get information out to folks and communities about what Common Core and Smarter Balance Assessments were all about. Um, I was in the State House last term for Belknap District 8, mm -hmm. and it was wonderful. I mean, I traveled a lot. I saw a lot of New, of, New, of New Hampshire in places I never thought I would be speaking and talking to folks about what Common Core is really all about and how they can uh, start to take back local control of their schools. Well, in Manchester, they've already said that they weren't going to use Common Core. And, and, and uh, here in Nashua, they're going full steam ahead. So uh, we've got two different situations. Well, it's yes. because the mothers are going from district to district. I mean, I visited in Alton, where, where Jane lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were out in Brentwood the other, other week, and we just keep going where, where we're wanted, where they want to hear both sides. Mm -hmm. And Manchester was willing to listen to both sides. They decided they want their own better, higher standards, so mm -hmm. they started developing them. And I understand that the mayor does not want those smarter balance tests. And Nashua didn't either, but they felt compelled. We had uh, a middle school principal come out against them. I'm mm -hmm. um, saying they're inappropriate for our students. And then some teachers said that they were more psychological and sociological than academic, and they didn't want to administer them. So mm -hmm. that set the stage. Then the teachers union backed them up and said it's inappropriate, wrote to the state board followed by our local Nashua school board. And they thought they were inappropriate, but they were sort of delayed or distracted by a corporate counsel put out um, a, a legal brief and saying that, no, you have to do them. This is a mandate. Even though they all thought, all these professionals thought they're inappropriate, we have to do them. <laughs> it's a mandate because the state accepted it as a, as a program, and they are implementing it. It's right, without a public hearing. Right. There was no public hearing on Smarter Balance. Right. I've asked. And, and there's, no, there's no state support for it other than to tell you what to do. The New Hampshire DOE is, yeah. of course, in support of it. And right. as Doris was saying, at that meeting that they had in July of 2010, there was nobody at the meeting to speak about it, to discuss it. They pretty much just took a vote, and it was four to one, and then it was in. And uh, that, that's probably the biggest reason why I started to look at Common Core, because... I could not find any discussion about it before we, it was already in the schools. Mm -hmm. It was in our school uh, in Alton. And 
to me, that whole process was so backward. You know, local control is so very important. We have to allow our school boards mm -hmm. to run and, and be participatory in the schools that serve our kids. Well, how is that going to work in Manchester now? I mean, they're not going to do it, but everybody else is being told that they have to do it. Yes, well, the push is that you have to because they want, they want schools to feel compelled uh -huh. to stay to what has been taken in as, as a, a good uniform way of teaching, high standards. Now, I guess Manchester's job is to find standards that uh, they feel are appropriate and high and, and uh, excel, you know, excelling uh, standards and uh, find an assessment which I think is the big problem right now. Because they rejected the Common Core, so to speak. They didn't accept it. Right. They said they wanted higher standards. Now they're supposed to take the Common Core Alliance Smarter Balance Test, and they don't fit. Right. And yeah. it's not a good match. Plus, everyone, that, not everyone, a lot of the critics that have looked at this test, and they don't let us have a full copy to review. They're keeping it secret. You get a few, a few here. Um, but You don't get to see it. You don't get to see it. So How if crazy. you can't see it, it's going to... Our teachers are going to be in jeopardy. Oh, right. They're going to be evaluated based on this. It's not even validated yet. It won't be in 2015. So well, yeah. why are we going forward with this? And where was the public hearing? Why don't they come to the school district and say, we have a proposal for you. Let's let the parents look at it. Let's have the teachers look at it. Mm -hmm. Let's let you vote. But no, there was no public hearing, no voice. It's all about the money. Well, I understand that uh, it gets, gets kind of complicated, and people who are for Common Core say the reason uh, people are against it is they don't want to change the standards. So well, that's not true. No. No, uh, no. You no. do want to have standards. Of course. You want to have, but you want to have input on what those standards are. Exactly. And the biggest thing about the standards, and, it, and you're right, it is a very complex topic. And let's face it, most, most families are having trouble, you know, just figuring out how to get through the week without mm -hmm. trying to take apart what is really a bureaucratic monster, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You have on one side of the, of, the, of the debate that they're saying, no, we don't control the, the standards, right? I mean, you know, because it's, we're it's not a, supposed it's a, to control it's standards. It's a district decision. It's a district decision, right? But you have assessments mm -hmm. that are going to mandate what you teach. Right. If, this, if the assessments mandate, and you, you, you know, those assessments are everything because they have the data pointing. Uh, they're the thing that's going to really make communities uh, take certain standards to, to match that test. So it, how much choice does, does the community really have mm -hmm. if the assessment is everything? Mm -hmm. And with Common Core, the assessments are everything. And the other part of it, as we were saying, is the assessments, there's so, been so much debate now that the assessments are not necessarily high. They are uniform. Well, now let's have the debate. What does uniform mean? Mm. Doesn't uniform mean that perhaps the ones, the, the, the students that are of a higher level uh, within, you know, within the school mm -hmm. as, you know, assessment arena, are they going to be pushed down because mm -hmm. we have to meet that uniformity? What is that? That's not education. No. no. It kills innovation. It, of course. They're avoiding gaps. And this is Manchester's being hit hard with this. They're saying that the minorities haven't had access to the APs right. and the honors courses. Right. So they're doing a pilot study and yes. getting rid of leveling. And other school districts are, are copying and doing this too. Yeah. Um, why? Every, nobody well, filters out yeah. what class you could go to based on race. But they're uh, supposing that that's the basis that we're deciding. This uh, word you use, leveling, can you uh, explain what that means to the audience? Uh, In high school, they have four levels in uh -huh. Nashua, and I think they have most about schools. most in Manchester. They have the AP level, which is college prep, advanced placement. They have honors courses, which kids are a little bit above the norm. Usually somewhere around the middle, there's a third level. And then there's the kids that need a little bit of extra help. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason to put them in with struggling with the, with the wrong group, because you feel defeated. You want to get, you want to build up a, a student's confidence that they can tackle the work that this class is being yes, given, okay. and if they, they feel confident, then maybe the next year they'll go up the next level. Right. So it, it's designed to help the students, and now they're saying that this leveling is, is, is undermining the minorities. So I, I think actually, Doris, um, can, it, the confusion comes in that when you say leveling, there are people that think it, you mean just like one yeah. uniform one kind of level. Of but, but what Doris is talking about, the fact that there are levels 
And, mm -hmm. and somehow those levels have now political correctness has just gone crazy. Yeah. That yeah. somehow those levels are not fair. I, I don't see how it's you white, can... It's white privilege or I something. Know, it's, it's just this not This new a, concept of white privilege. Good. But think of the poor teacher. Now yeah. she's got four levels in her class, and right. she's going to be graded on how well she does juggling four levels. On an assessment that offers no flexibility whatsoever. Right. And that she can't see. Well, even the assessment now that goes out doesn't... Uh, I mean, they look at the, everybody's marks together, whether you're uh, proficient or... You know, not, the, we had the kneecaps before, yeah. the New England um, academic test placements. Um, but, and they said this was high-stakes testing. It was right. a bad idea. Nobody liked it. No, and it didn't work. Okay, let's just scrap it. So All what right. do they do? Replace it with a new version. Which is yeah. on stage. Same stakes. thing. Yes. Yes, and, to... and they're doing the data mining right. because these assessments, once they're online, and Nashua spent a million dollars to getting the technology ready for these tests. And once the kids take them, they're adaptive tests. So if you do well, you get a harder question. You don't do as well, you get an easier question, which is supportive and good. But all of this information goes to the consortia that developed the test, which is Pearson. And they developed 80% of our textbooks and both of these, these assessments that are common core across the country. So they have a monopoly. But all the data goes on to the consortia, which is required by their contract with the U.S. Department of Education to give the data level, the, the student level data, on a regular basis to the federal government. Right. So where's the privacy? Which is so crazy. I and mean, why, why do they need it? I think that the whole top-down form of, of education mm -hmm. is that they seek to take, take the student at what they perceive or how they test to be at a certain level to go then into the workforce. And let's face it, workforce education is not true education because mm -hmm. you're teaching to a supposed level of ability mm -hmm. based on you know these questionable tests and to me that's the antithesis of what education's supposed to be mm. because we all know too we've seen plenty of data that says children learn in very different ways right. and let's face it one way isn't necessarily better or worse it's just different so how do we teach to the child now mm -hmm. when we have a, a test an assessment that inevitably will lead to whether a teacher is going to be retained or not, that teacher now has stress to make sure that those questions and those questions alone are going to be passed by that student. Mm -hmm. That's not what education is. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be a love for learning. We're supposed to teach a lifelong mm -hmm. uh, uh, approach that a child can grow with and, and embrace and love. You don't do that with teaching to test. Mm -hmm. you, you really kill spirit, I believe, with this mm -hmm. kind of but assessment. You think back with Maria Montessori. Mm -hmm. Her whole philosophy was follow the child. Yeah, that's right. And she took children that were um, special needs. They had a different label for it. But she had the special needs children, and they weren't expected to do much. And she st showed great things because right. she followed the child. She innovated with each mm -hmm. child. She gave mm -hmm. them what they needed to succeed. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a uniform Absolutely. curriculum. Absolutely. So we're, we're now going in reverse. Based on this data mining, the whole system enables the data mining, which they say is for research to improve the whole system. Mm -hmm. But why are librarians being penalized and guidance counselors? Yeah. Everybody's going to be judged By on these assessment. assessments. And parents have the right to refuse. The schools may feel locked in and they feel mandated that they have to give them, but every parent still has their rights. And if they can't see the test and they think it's going to be a high stress for their child, and they want to protect their teacher. Mm. They may say no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. And you, you know what? We would we'd like to empower teach parents to be able to say that it's very uncomfortable because so, who wants to go into their local school right. and try to opt their child out of a test? Because mm -hmm. the pushback from the administration is usually, well, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You as long as we accept that, they're right. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, isn't that the whole message of? of being participatory, right? Yeah. whether you're talking about little bitty communities or even federal. You know. So you're telling people go out there and uh, just list. tell their uh, superintendent that they yeah. have the right. my child isn't going to participate. That's right. And they're not alone. There is a oh, movement gosh. nationwide. Mm -hmm. There are hundreds and thousands well, of How many parents. states has, uh, actually a couple of states have rejected oh, it? Up to five now, five, I think. Really? Oh, yeah. And that's just common core. There are others that are resisting more that are resisting the assessment. Uh -huh. Some are the rejecting the test. standards. Yeah. Some are pulling out of either the Smarter Balance or PAC consortia mm -hmm. because they had a choice to pick one or the other. Four states didn't pick any 
any at all. They just, mm -hmm. Texas, uh, Virginia, Nebraska, and Alaska, they stayed out. I think Minnesota only was half in. So there's a lot of states that didn't get into this game at all, Virginia. but there's an awful lot of them. There's about a dozen or more that are starting that have pulled out. Look at New York. Swamp. New York is fighting mm -hmm. all over the place mm -hmm. about this. You know, Teachers I'm, unions are furious. Absolutely. They're did calling did for Massachusetts the, pull out too? Or they're they? pausing because they had the best standards in the country right. and they accepted the money and the, the Common Core and now they're saying, wait a minute, every district you have a choice this year whether you want to go to the MCAS, Come. the old method, right. or the new. Which is good. And they're rethinking the whole thing. Isn't that like a moratorium or something? It's a delay. It's a okay. pause. I, I don't know if they've, they've gone further than that. Because they know that they've lost a lot. But it's, a, it's sort of like, how do, you, how do you say no to money? Right. I was just going to say, that's the penalty, isn't it? Yeah. Cutting off you say no. Fun. It's yeah. very simple. You well. say no. Because it's not even just in education that we've seen this. And this has been a nationwide... Uh, not to be political, but the first stimulus package, mm -hmm. okay, that came through, subsidized a lot well, of the monies right. for this top-down, mm -hmm. common core, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. endeavor. And how we keep seeing that the money keeps coming in, right? Our free tax dollars. I love that. It, I mean, how weird is that? We pay the taxes, <laughs> and then we get it back, but it's free federal money, mm -hmm. right? With well, a little money, bit of a cut. Your children will pay for it. Don't worry. It's Our free. children are paying for Our it. Our grandchildren are going to yes, have to pay right, for it. You're right. You're right, Carl. And that's why we need to say no and not yeah. be afraid to do it. Well, I everyone's afraid so. that some other town or some other district is going to accept the money and then they're going to be behind. But what they don't understand, like Common Core, it cost us a million dollars for technology alone in the district mm -hmm. of Nashua School District. That's a lot of money. That's downshifting. Yeah. So we got some money, but we spent a lot more. Well, the state's not supposed to impose programs without I paying for them. They say that, of course, you're going to periodically upgrade your technology yes. and your textbook and, and your teacher is. training. Right. But you don't, I mean. But you have no selection in what you, how you uh, do it. You have to do it only one way. Exactly. And Microsoft is already requiring in some states, I read this on a, I want to say Georgia, I forget now. Um, requiring that after they put in all of this Microsoft uh, software. software, software, now they have to go do it all again because the software is now being upgraded, upgraded. Oh, and they're not supporting the lower versions. All that money, oh my goodness! I mean, mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. Who thinks this is a good idea? It's just going to keep getting upgraded. Technology is going to keep that's changing. That's why it. Bill Gates and his foundation are supporting. That's right. Race and to the, the top. And the Pearson Foundation—they were sued in New York State. And they won against Pearson. They had to pay a fine because Pearson goes around whining and dining the districts and getting them to, you know, mm -hmm. buy all of their mm -hmm. materials. Right. They own 80% of the U.S. market on textbooks right. mm. and 100% of these consortia assessments. And aren't mm. they the person, the, uh, isn't that the group that has copywritten all of no, this material? The copyright is owned by the, new, the National Governors Association. Oh, that's right. Okay. Which is a trade organization. That's right. right. A private trade organization. <laughs> so... There is no mechanism, no governance that you can, if you want to fix something that's in there, there's, there's no mechanism. Yeah. That's not And they're educators too, the national governors, so, which was the, really the group, the, the vessel through which they got it all started. Mm -hmm. And what do they know about education? Well, there were very few teachers putting this together. <laughs> that's the same. Well, I know we had a big re, uh, thing at St. Anselm's last year. And oh, was it last year? Yes, yeah, I think it was last year. <laughs> Uh, a lot of things, a lot of people were uh, upset about what was going on there. Yes. Uh, the second one again. But uh, what, what has happened with that? Is that going around more? Are you going to have more uh, St. Anselm types? We've had debates yes. all over the place. Um, they just had one in Hollis, Brooklyn. Have they? Where, yeah, where the, uh, it was proponents this time. Uh -huh. And they had canned questions. You had to write down your question. Not all the questions were answered. Like I asked about refusing. Are they going to respect the parents' right to refuse? And they just don't Somehow ask. they lost that index. <laughs> I don't know. But, um. So your group is going around at all these places that are having A lot of meetings. the mothers are. There's a, there's a strong group of mothers that just feel that they can't take no for an answer. This has to be resolved, and we have to do it for the, our kids and our grandkids. And there's an enormous number of uh, candidates that are actually running for the state senate and for the house that this is mm -hmm. the major mm -hmm. reason, the pivotal mm -hmm. reason, 
why they got into the game. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people are running just, just for that, but there are other reasons, oh, too. Oh, there's many reasons, Because yeah. I think we're, we're, we're all seeing this push towards one common everything. That's right. Centralization. You know, medical, uh, you know, uh, insurance, you're going to have education, and Absolutely. what else is next? Uh, it's all in there now. There really is no privacy anymore. <coughs> and and the, the linchpin of it is that the government, through this centralizing bodies that they are putting in through, you know, bureau bureaucratic mm -hmm. uh, pen mm -hmm. is impacting every every section of our life. The unfortunately the Senate, uh, you know, talking about centralizing, um, two thousand and twelve, uh, Senator Booten and I think it was I forget who the other senator was, co sponsored a bill um, or supported a bill, I should misspeak, that would allow a database for every prescription drug given mm -hmm, to people mm -hmm, in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And that, where's that data going? Yeah. It's going, they say, to Concord. Come on. It'll be shared, just <laughs> like the education. Shared. <laughs> we started in April 2012 with our 400-point database for every student in this state, and it went live April 2012. Wow. It's in the minutes of the State Board of Education. And we got federal funds to develop this because it's illegal for the federal government to do it. So each state... Creates the uniform template, mm -hmm. fills it up, and then Ships shares it, it voluntarily. Shares it. Yes. So that's not a national database, but they have all the information. Oh, of course. Well, that's how they got around the FERPA, which was right. the you know the, the privacy rights mm -hmm. and privacy, mm -hmm. and now HIPAA, which is supposed to be doing the same thing for our medical. Our medical. Yeah. Why are people accepting this? This doesn't have to be this way. It used to be that we thought, uh, let the states do things differently and yes. see which one's better and yes. learn right. from one another. Right. And New Hampshire used to embrace that. Right. I mean, remember a time when New Hampshire was independent. I mean, but we just keep stepping in the same way. And unfortunately, um, you know, we don't have a base. There's not a big corporation, corporate base in New Hampshire to be able to assist what's happening financially to this state because we're trying to go in a centralized way, we're just losing money all over the place. Our business numbers are down. Small businesses are inhibited all over the place. I mean, Medicaid expansion is going to hurt every single business owner right. in, this, in this state. And it's, uh, it, I don't know, it's, it's really confusing as to why people aren't uh, more of an uproar about this commonality that's the, the driving through. I think they don't know. They don't know where the They don't know solution. where it's going. Like, you have children, and they grow up, they get educated, they can't find jobs in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So they have to move out of the state. Right. So your grandchildren are not nearby. That's right. So it's a hardship, emotionally and every other way, because we don't have the jobs here. Right. It's critical to get them back. Let me understand one uh, couple of things. My, uh, what I heard is that all the stuff that was developed was developed by an organization not by the colleges who supposedly were the ones that needed uh, the uh, students to be better educated when they entered college. Chief Inc. was a private group that was set up. And right. I've heard talk that there were four or five key people in developing the standards. Then they brought in that group of 29 um, teachers and, and professionals right. that came in and to see if they would look them over and approve them. But they were told that they weren't allowed to disclose any information. Right, they had to sign that. They had to sign non-disclosures uh, statements. And two of the major math and English uh, teachers, uh, certified teachers and, and standards builders of them, of their in their own right, mm -hmm. refused. Right. Mm -hmm. so, and, and of course, there, there was a real campaign to try to make those two people. Um, they push really back. Yeah. They 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 really try to marginalize them. Yeah. And uh, we've, we've been lucky to have an awful lot of help with that information from those two people. Well, Sandra Stotsky was one that didn't sign, and she's worked with Manchester right. to develop the better standards. She came up, and she spoke to the teachers, and she's, she's going all over. Just, she says, just pay my expenses. And, Isn't that great? And she's just working. Another one of the moms. Yeah. 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 Just working overtime because this can't go on. No. This can't continue. Uh, the companies, too, uh, that uh, are going to employ these people once they get through college. and or Well, not all of them get through college. Some right. go to technical school. And some just go from high school right into work workforce. Mm -hmm. uh, do they have any reaction? Do they see anything that's good, bad, or indifferent? 
You mean the students you, themselves? No, no, the, uh, the uh, companies or the schools. Well, I think the companies are trying. And when you have organizations like, um, what is it, BIA, yeah. New Hampshire? Business Industry Association. Yeah. Uh, Business that industrial. did support Common Core. Right. Um, it's, it's like a chamber of commerce right. uh, entity. And I think that that was probably because they assumed that the workforce would be helped would be. by, you know, but they they don't have the they don't see any of these objections as being real. No, no, no. They're, they're no. taught that this will, this will finally produce students that they can hire and solve their problem. They're sold they a bill of goods. They, there's no proof. This yeah. is not a tested curriculum. Not this assessments. There's no proof. They're not even validated to be mm -hmm. an accurate tool to measure anything. And there's nothing to say that these measurements will inform the instruction right. and somehow produce a better student. No. There's, there's nothing. So they're just taking this on a hope, mm -hmm. and they're well, getting on board. I mean, I think, too, again, the centralizing force is, is not just hitting families. It hits businesses as well. And, for instance, uh, same, same group, business and industry, you know, BIA of New Hampshire, supported the Medicaid expansion, right? And, um, you know, that pool that needed insurance certainly should be looked at. But they ended up selling an adjunct, you know, insurance product. Mm-hmm. And so one has to wonder um, why, you know, why are they doing that kind of thing? Because it's almost like subverting what they're supposed to mm -hmm. be doing, which mm -hmm. is a free, you know, free kind of support of businesses and, and enterprise in the state of New Hampshire. So I'm not sure that it's at this point it's bill of goods. Um, it's again just accepting what's easy, easily put forth, mm -hmm. and. Just going. Just letting it. somebody else take control. Exactly. It's far easier for everybody yes. to get on board because mm -hmm. there's a, a lot of money behind it. It right. was mm -hmm. $4.35 in stimulus well, money. Oh, sure. All the textbooks and then costs. Got, and, you've got all the Gates yeah. Foundation yeah. and you've got the Pearson Foundation and all this money that's chasing this. So it's sort of like right. much easier just to go along to get along mm -hmm. and hope yeah. for the best. Mm -hmm. And I can understand why businesses or school districts would want to do that. But again, essentially, we have to start to try to figure out we are so far flung from mm -hmm. where we need to be mm -hmm. as a state and as a country. And until we can learn to turn and say, no, no, we can, we can pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, thank mm -hmm. you very much, mm -hmm. and we'll figure this out together yeah. in the way that we should, you know, working mm -hmm. together as a unit and getting input and, and solving the problems. I, I firmly believe, and I know Doris feels the same way, we would never be running for state senate if we thought that that 24 body, 24 member body, mm -hmm. could not right the train that is mm -hmm. currently mm -hmm. careening down the well, wrong Well, I think track. that's one thing that we do have here in New Hampshire. We do have a, a more people government. That's the only way to really get back and uh, put right. the people in control. They had a bill that would have asked the legislature to approve Common Core, and that was tabled in the Senate. That's right. Mm, the Senate good. was the one that it tabled. passed to the House. I believe it's when you were in, in the legislature. And then it got, there was mm. two bills. Um, they went through education, House Education Committee. They went through the full House. And one of them made it over to the Senate. And uh, that one was tabled. That was tabled. to stop it. That was to, not to stop it, but to require the legislature. See, they've circumvented That's right. the, le the elected representative, mm -hmm. the people's elected They're representative. They're doing that a lot of <laughs> Both the legislature and the school board. Right. What they did is they took federal money. They created a regional liaisons. They went through the back door. And they've been whispering to superintendents, not in the light of day, right. no transparency, no minutes. <coughs> the public doesn't know. And all of a sudden, it's in your school, full bloom. Mm -hmm. How did it get there? So the legislature, rightly so, said, hey, we need to talk about this in the public. Right. We need public hearings. Right. We never got one on Smarter Balance. Mm. We got two on Common Core in the middle of the summer, and nobody attended. <laughs> so well, it's nobody like, knew. nobody knew. <laughs> and that was based on 60-page standards for 12 years, so that's mm -hmm. five <coughs> pages for, say, 12th grade math. What mm -hmm. are you going to cover in five pages? It's just a, a summary. It, it wasn't mm -hmm. very comprehensive. So based on this final draft summary, we adopted this sight unseen. Right, and we subverted and the legislative process in doing it. Right. Well, uh, you, <coughs> we have something here in Nashua that's going to be done over the next, I don't know, X number of months of uh, testing. Um, is that supposed to give us more information on whether we should go ahead or not? Next spring, <coughs> 2015, will be the first broad um, implementation mm -hmm. of the Smarter Balance. Okay. They've been testing 
I think, in certain school districts. They've done districts. pilots and field pilots, tests. It's right. research. Right. That's a small subset because it's not validated. It won't be validated till after 2015 is mm -hmm. done because they need 90 to 95 percent participation in order to calibrate it. Otherwise, they're just guessing. So unless they get that, it's, it's not valid. And we have a state statute that says that we're not supposed to administer right. anything but valid assessments. So we're jumping the gun here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and why couldn't NASHA bow out? If it's not valid, why couldn't NASHA say, validate it and come back to me when it's ready? Absolutely. I don't know. Any no. community could. And why aren't our children being paid for doing the research for this very profitable group that's making money and, mm -hmm. and this piercing? <coughs> Strong. Well, let's talk of some of the examples that I've seen published. I think there was a, a, an opinion article written in the Union Leader a week or so ago on Common Core. They brought up some examples like Common Core is not going to teach cur cursive writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not going to go way back and talk about the history of why the United States even got formed or how right. it got formed. Right. And uh, that they were trying to bring up other topics that were, uh, oh, how we uh, treated the Indians badly yes. or slavery Political or something correct. like Why that. Why are we delegating our <coughs> control to somebody else to instill values into our children that we have no control mm -hmm, over? Mm -hmm. I saw something about the Declaration of Independence, yes, and they're talking about how there's, you know, it privilege. was not valid. It w well, the, it the was not blacks valid. Right, and, the, we and had the women. Slavery and women couldn't right. vote. So they're only talking about the negatives. There were a few good things in that Declaration you think? of Independence. Just a few. Just a few. <laughs> so <laughs> and uh, cursive. Well, we now have computers, so we're teaching, you know, right from the beginning, primary kids to mm -hmm, type, even mm -hmm. though their kids, their hands aren't very big. But how are they signing their checks, their mortgage contracts, and that's. That design of those letters, designing that on your paper and thinking, you know, yeah. that develops it's something in your, yeah, your brain. It's, How it's do you read than... the founding documents? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're all in cursive. Mm -hmm. So what, do you have to find a computer copy of one and to Probably. read it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's absurd. A, Everything's computerized. You get a birthday card from a grandparent. Help How do you read it? Absolutely. Here, Absolutely. Mom, could you read this for me? Yeah, and that's what's going to happen. I mean, that is just so sad. I, I don't understand how how we got there. They're streamlining it because they want to go narrower and deeper. Well, it's very narrow, <laughs> and I don't know about the deeper. That's right. They're piling it higher. <laughs> That's probably more like it. Oh. So how is this going to work in your campaigns now? Well, this is your prime issue, I assume. And, but it, It's uh, a major issue. I mean, I'm going to listen to everybody's concerns, and I want to represent uh -huh. them. And I think getting back local control on every level not just education, but I think I have something to offer because my opponent hasn't been helping parents and teachers and students. So I'm going to help her by mm -hmm. bringing the dialogue forward. Mm -hmm. And if she doesn't come up to the plate and the, and the voters think that maybe we need somebody new to come in and fix this problem, mm -hmm. then maybe it's my time to get up there and do more than talk yep. mm. and so, to vote. Yeah, for, I, I mean, certainly that's one of the three planks that I'm really concerned about and, and our I believe the the Republican platform also um, is against Common Core mm -hmm. and I'm running as a Republican and just feel like the big planks of the platform um, <coughs> we should be abiding by mm -hmm. and to me it's not RRD anymore now it's turned into progressive and conservative right, right. And I'm seeing a lot of Democrats that understand the issue too they don't like this this uh, corporations buying out right. their public schools. Right. This is abhorrent to them. Yeah. And they're, they're concerned about the data mining. Hopefully they'll... They they'll are. No, I've, I've heard some several in, in Nashua, some yeah. that I really respect, Democrats, Good. that have uh, stepped up to the plate and said this is a problem. Yeah. And I've heard them throughout the state. I mean, I've, I've been conversing with people, Democrats in Keene and in various places, so I'm encouraged. Mm -hmm. I think the more they know, the more they will want to take back control. It's not like we don't want an innovative program. No, if it's great. I think everybody likes fine. that. That's why you go to certain, you, where you buy a house. But we don't like to be straightjacketed. Yes. yes. Would, uh, and these, these charter schools that are starting up and uh, more homeschooling that's going on is because we're dissatisfied with that's the right. school. Right. We all want high standards and we want, uh, we want good teachers, and there's a lot of people there that are innovative. Yes, absolutely. But Let the, the teachers teach. Yeah. And the poor are going to be affected the worst, and that's the problem. Mm -hmm. You have to have a certain amount of money or de dedication or determination to 
homeschool or, or afford private school, even with scholarships. Mm -hmm. So the the poor, I mean, mm -hmm. they're going to be, gonna be they're hurting. not going to have any choice and at isn't all. Isn't it ironic that too, like you said about taking the leveling out, the dialogue is always about helping the, the under that, that yeah. un, you know yeah. that yeah. that group that needs the help. And so what is done is rather than attack the problem that will service that population. Right. We throw these large governmental nets over mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. And we help no one in the That's process right. because we're not helping that specific group. And we're certainly not helping those that aren't in that group. There's just got to be a better way to problem solve this. You know what it is? It's hard to do that work. It's hard to get people in a consensus mm -hmm. to sit there and pound out, how do we fix this? Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't go away. We don't get distracted. How do we fix this? And I think that if we made our elected, you know, our elected servants, or our, our public servants, mm -hmm. sit at the table and look specifically at the issue, you can solve things. It's doable. Mm -hmm. we're, we're immobile right now. I, I know right. I'm hitting doors already. I'm talking, in, uh, I live in Hooksit now, my husband and I, and we have a, a great little organization going around knocking doors. And I'm hearing a lot. People are immobile. They are so numb from all of the stuff that's been pressing down on them mm -hmm. that they almost feel like either they, A, have to check out totally because they just can't deal, mm -hmm. or two, there's, there's nothing they can do. Mm. And that is the worst that's, place yeah. to be oh, because definitely. you will fix nothing mm -hmm. if we cannot energize the, the voter population to understand that this is ours. That's right. This doesn't belong to them. This is ours. We can fix this. Mm -hmm. Get up. We can fix it together. I mean, it's a big thing, but you're right. that I think people are overwhelmed by how yeah. big how government is getting into everything and Absolutely. how they're doing it. And you got to have, you want a smaller government, yes. and you want their direct Accountable. control. Accountable. Accountable. A, local, a local government. And, that's right. Right. and then we're seeing it in other states, like in New York, the teachers are speaking out because they're farther into this program because right. they got the race to the top money. When it hits hard next year, I'm hoping that the teachers that are quietly talking to us right. will start coming out and standing mm -hmm. together and, and speaking well, out against Well, that's fearful. This. You know, I don't blame any I teacher. I don't blame them. Because it's... look what they're being forced to do. Mm -hmm. Even if they have issues with it, they're told to not talk about those issues. There are teachers that are afraid they'll lose their job if they speak out. Imagine working under that kind of mm -hmm. pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just abhorrent to me in any way, shape, or form. How could we have let that happen? Right. Well, you, they're going to have a, a situation that's even worse if they go ahead and they have to try to teach us something as complex as this. Yeah. Unless you they can't, they it's can't really close almost their impossible. eyes to it. No, they've yeah. got to look. Yeah. But you've even got our school board. We had the votes. We had nearly five that were going to say, smart or balanced, yeah. you're going to be delayed. And they were told because of the mandate, because it might be illegal um, what they're doing. Fear. So they couldn't act in the best interest of the children. Right. And that's huge. Yes, it is. You know, and, and truly, the Senate for me, I mean, Doris has been, this has been her singular issue. And, and I consider her probably, if not the biggest expert in this, in the state, certainly close. I've sort of learned from Doris. But what I am seeing is the, the biggest weapon that is being used by those that want to uh, perpetuate centralization, whether it's, you know, whatever you're talking about, is the fear. Yeah. Well, if you don't allow this to happen in your school, you're going to lose this, or you're going to lose Title I funds, or you have no way to get out. Or if you are in talking about a zoning issue, right? And if you don't do this, workforce housing, your community is going to get sued. Do you want a suit? Wouldn't it be just smarter to just, you know? This is being used again mm -hmm. and again and again. Mm -hmm. It's a fear mode. That's mm -hmm. why people are immobile. Because how do you fight that? Mm -hmm. That's big. Right? Bullying. And it is bullying. But you know what? No one calls people on No, it doesn't call these centralizers on it. And they don't like it when you do it. But it's the truth. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. And I feel so bad for people when I knock on the door. And, and I can tell when I talk to them that they're just, you know, their spirit has been yeah. almost broken. At that point, the politics goes out the window. I don't, almost don't even want to talk about the politics. But to tell them, you know what? It's not done. We're mm -hmm. not done. If you are unhappy with this, whatever it might be, you can fix this. Join up, yes. You see, that's what we're, we're seeing over the past year or so. We've only known about this for two years. Mm -hmm. There is a movement that is growing in New Hampshire. It is doubling 
you know, month by month because more and more people are becoming aware of it. We get people that are in, in some obscure district and they'll contact us. Yeah. And what do we do first? So we help them. We tell them how to empower their school board right. members, how they can, you know, push back. Mm -hmm. And then once they see others are doing it with them, it it's happen. very encouraging. So they should contact either one of you, with sure. us, our sure. listeners that uh, right. are upset about what to do and uh, how to work and maybe. Uh, we have a forum and we invite everyone. It's not like we only invite those that are against Common Core. Mm -hmm. In fact, the most effective meetings that we have been present at have been with people there that have come in pro Common Core because we get to talk to them about specific questions they have or, you know, if they want to rebut, mm -hmm. we can meet that. Nothing bad comes from debate, mm -hmm. although we all hate it, right? Everybody kind of runs, ah, you know. But the truth is it's through debate mm -hmm. that we fix things, that we come to understandings about things. So to me, I love the debate, but the wonderful thing uh, is that these school boards can understand that, number one, there are ways to work together to get wherever that school might want to be, and also for the parents. I mean, how many times have we seen, I've seen it quite a bit, where they cry during what we're talking about because they've had a specific issue in their school with their child and they didn't know how, well, to, how to do about it. Yeah. Right. yeah. Can you imagine? But I don't even mm -hmm. call them debates. I call them just sharing the information. Sure. Because when we went to Hollis, they were covering the information. Right. They weren't letting it out. So they can have their forums and that's great because some questions are asked and a little bit of break. But it's not open. You could see that the whole audience knew that they were being caught, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. there was a lot more to this. Hollis just voted three to one against Common Core. They really? had a ballot question, and they voted three to one against having it in their schools. Good. So then the district turned around and said, that's only advisory. Yeah. So they, they, that audience was in there, and they were mad. They were listening to this panel. But we go in there, okay, they had their panel. So we go, I've been to Hollis. You, you're with me. We went and we talked in a, in a smaller setting in a firehouse. Mm -hmm. And we presented the information that they hadn't heard from the other side. and said, did you know this? This is how the money came. This is how it got into your school. Right. This is how the regional liaisons work behind your back. And they're like, okay, now this makes sense. Right. This is what you can do. Mm -hmm. This is what others are doing. This is what districts have flipped it. Just and, don't accept it. You can, take it. you can take the control back in just about any arena that you look at. The communities can take their control back mm -hmm. because... Let's face it, it's their money. Mm -hmm, it's our mm -hmm, money. Mm -hmm. And our money should go to our communities in the way that we deem proper. It's not some other, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that comes out of the sky and then says, oh, you have to do this. That might be perpetuated, but that's not factual. Well, I know here in Nashua, I've been here now uh, 12 years, and uh, I've seen no real improvement in the educational level. Uh, I don't see There's anything. There's some really good teachers. Oh, I'm not saying that there yeah. isn't some good teachers and a lot of good students there. Mm -hmm. But of overall, I don't think we're handling the diverse uh, students that we have very well. I think part of the problem is, is we keep cycling in and out failed programs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No sure. child left behind, no, the kneecaps. They're admitting they're failed programs. How many? Millions of dollars well, do we waste on them? Well, so, comes, yeah. And then why are we taking in the next series? A million dollars for technology. Same thing, and you're not changing the Why don't the we way. just hunker down yeah. and think for ourselves? Think for ourselves. Not well, I think that. it's what you brought up earlier, though. We're trying to treat everybody on one level. Right. And when you have a level here that has one problem, you have this level that has a That's different right. problem. But we're not, right. do, we're not building widgets. No. We're building individuals. That's right. And homeschoolers no, we don't. We want to build individuals, but that is not what the centralized planners That's right. want. They want little, little people to fill these little bitty uh, you know, needs that they perceive are, are, right. are what you need to do. But that's not, you know, when we talk about exceptionalism, remember the days when mm -hmm. we actually could talk about exceptionalism? Right. And we believed it. That and our country it. was right. Right. exceptional. Yeah. You could be anything you wanted to be. I was the last of eight children, and I wanted to sing opera on the world's biggest stages. And you know what? I did it. <laughs> and that, I would never have done that. If I had been tested probably to yeah. death, you know, yeah. how many people are actually going to make right, a career right, living, right. living their dream of opera, right? I mean, on a test, that might not look good. But that was my inspiration. That was my uh -huh. desire. Sure. But now, if you don't do well in math or English, 
then you're going to be remediated and you're going to lose the arts. Yeah, wow. That's what they're doing in the school. They're going to have one More period. Time. I don't know what they call There's a certain period where they do remediation. Yeah. So if you didn't do well, yeah. you would have to forego those electives, the arts. Yeah. Mm. And of so, course, that's part of horrible. building building great individuals. That's dimension of personality and dimension of, of development in our brains because we don't those are parts we don't always use all the time, right? So what what are we doing? Why are we b developing an educational system? to fill cogs of the wheel, mm -hmm. rather than just saying, the sky's the limit, yeah. go do it, we'll help you. Right. That's what we should be telling people. That's right. right. Bring back. Not narrower and deeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's right. very narrow, and it, it, it doesn't consider all children, and they're, they're unique. Absolutely. So. Well, we have a unique system. I hope you ladies are successful in showing people <laughs> a way out of this morass. I try. Oh, thank you. But uh, it's only a start. There's it is. many things. I mean, this happens to be probably the prime important topic because it involves our children, it's our a future. Generation, next generation. Uh, we have other similar problems that you're going to have to address in the Senate, yes, too. Absolutely. Uh, and hopefully, we can keep this government as small as we have kept it mm -hmm. and as uh, less intrusive than it is now. Yep. They can't go around telling everybody they have to and fit the mold. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to solve problems, as you said. Absolutely. Take responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, really, I, I, I thank you, for, too, for appearing with us. Uh, thank you. And thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll have you back before the, uh, well, you're not in primaries, either one of you? I'm in a primary. She's oh, you're in, in a primary, that's yes. right. Yes. Well, maybe we can have you back uh, before the primary, but at least sure. before the final election. Absolutely. Uh, to talk nice. about what progress you've made uh, mm -hmm. on getting across your arguments, yes. uh, because I agree you, you do a very good job and, oh, and you, you have a lot of information that people could really use. We so, want to share it. Okay, so listen in, contact these people, you know where to get them, and they'll help you. And thank you again Pleasure. for appearing. It's nice to be here. Seating program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.